beauty of London is that it's constantly changing. I think it was said that um, if you're tired of London, then you're tired of life. It, it offers everything which life affords. London was you know, probably the first marketplace that uh, congregated insurance companies together, congregated the banks together in one place. Um, if you want uh, to buy diamonds, there is one area in London that you go to. And, and I think the major benefit of Silicon Roundabout is that all the skills are there, the developers, the coders, the, 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 the funders, the incubators are in one place. You can move around, the DNA gets um, um, mixed up quite nicely, you can hang out with your peers. Having seen Silicon Valley, being actually from Germany and having lived in Berlin before, London is definitely one of the best places in the world because unlike Silicon Valley, it is actually a metropolitan area which is very condensed. There's a lot of things going on in a very small space. So I can just walk over this Google campus from here and meet a lot of great other startups. In Silicon Valley, you always have to have a car, you have to drive to the next place or you have to go to San Francisco which also is a great city to start a company. But um, London is special in, in that it's one of the biggest cities in the world. It's one of the centers, I would say, of the world. Um, there's a huge ecosystem that is a lot bigger than the one in Berlin, for example. There's so many uh, advisors, people with a lot of knowledge, big companies that you can actually work with. So that's, I guess, one of the big differences. There's a lot of companies that you can sign up as a customer because they're big themselves and they have cash to, to spend on a good solution. I mean, I feel that Google Campus is a real focus for a lot of the amazing energy that London already had, but it's now being focused particularly around Tech City in the area where, where we are now. Um, it's a pretty amazing building in the sense that you get a really high volume of, uh, of people from all different backgrounds, abilities, ages, interests. You're in a special place with campus here. This is pretty much ground zero for the London startup scene, and everyone, you know, everyone kind of knows the roundabout and and this building here. So it's uh, it's a pretty special place to be in because different partners and different levels, or different floors, and it's a real open source building, and so you get just such a hub of activity here. So it's it's pretty awesome, and 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 again, there's just a ton of companies all all around here. quite expensive to have a studio here. London's not a kind of cheap place to be in, but it constantly keeps you on your toes. The very fact of having these sort of expensive rents forces you to kind of push harder and work harder just to stay afloat. And I think that has a really kind of positive impact on creativity. Uh, I see a lot of cities which are maybe more comfortable and easier and cheaper to stay in uh, feel, I don't know if it's true, slightly more kind of relaxed. And I think for this sort of work, it's quite nice to be on your toes and just have to kind of work hard to kind of stay afloat. Everywhere I travel on, on the planet has their own Silicon Roundabout, Silicon Valley, some sort of like, you know, Silicon ripoff um, somewhere there. And the big problem is always access to capital because you can have incredibly motivated entrepreneurs willing to bootstrap and um, pivoting every 17 or 18 seconds because that's dreadfully fashionable and being as lean as they possibly can and having a minimal viable product or whatever this week's trendy, trendy thing is. But if they haven't got access to capital, the whole thing is doomed. And I think it's, it's somehow about integrating that. The UK is incredibly lucky that they've got um, amazing tax incentives for angels. There's EIS, SEIS, which effectively mean you invest 100 into a company and you've paid 100 in tax, you get 50 of it back immediately. Then, um, should um, something dreadful happen, you can write the rest of it off at your top level of tax. So, you know, you're in for very, very little. I've been here for eight years and I think the attitude hasn't changed. Um, so British, in, British government and industries here really understand the role of innovation uh, in the economy. Um, what has changed, of course, is that we've been through a massive crisis and the budgets are slow, smaller. Um, but I think, honestly, like, I, I 
I wouldn't go anywhere else, uh, at least in Europe. The entrepreneurship scene in London, but also the UK, has become incredibly vibrant. So I was part of a campaign that launched called Startup Britain three years ago. And over that time, the UK is now seeing record numbers of people start a business. So this year, there'll be half a million people that start a business in the UK, which is incredible. And what we've seen is a flourishing amount of support available for startup businesses. So wherever you turn, you either get support from peers or you get support from proven entrepreneurs who've done their business and are now giving back. So it's a great time to be starting a business in Britain. And I think there'll be a big focus next year on encouraging all these startups to grow.